Things really haven't been going good for Microsoft at the minute. They've been taking L after L. For example, that failed merger with Activision Blizzard that would have got them billions of dollars and maybe even made Call of Duty a timed exclusive so everyone would have bought an Xbox. Because believe me when I say, no one in current year is buying an Xbox. And then Microsoft thought, okay, we'll just gobble up every video game company we can think of. They got Bethesda, they got Arcane, they made Redfall, and IGN gave Redfall a 1 out of 10. I have never seen IGN give a game such a low score apart from Call of Duty when the bribe money doesn't arrive. But today, I'm going to take you on a journey before the Xbox Series X, before the Xbox One, to the time of the Xbox 360, when the Xbox actually had games. Now, you might remember with the 360, there was the Kinect, the little motion sensor thing, kind of like the Wii, but without the nunchucks. Well, there's something very weird about the Kinect, a game that was promised to come out that was meant to revolutionize everything. But the game never existed. It was a huge lie. And for the most part, it's been swept under the rug. I remember Project Milo, uh, and it's really, really really interesting. Okay, I, I won't say too much because I'm sure this guy will give the whole context, but I've got I've got a lot to add. There's a, there's a lot of slop. There's a lot of slop here. Micro slop. In this video, you're going to see the future. Terrible. This this if any if any of you think this kid looks like he's from Heavy Rain, I'm so sorry. All right, it's 2009. Pigs are flying, everything has this aesthetic, and Microsoft has just announced a gra- Hang on, my, my camera's like, it's annoying me. All right, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's fine now, yeah. Groundbreaking new piece of tech at E3. Utilizing the latest advancements in motion capture, Project Natal, as it was initially named, was a new device for the Xbox that aimed to win audiences over with pure wow factor. The main goal of Natal was to bring families into the gaming equation by taking controllers out of- If anyone doesn't know, by the way, uh, the Xbox Connect, its name was Project Natal, like its code name. It's like before the Xbox uh, X came out, it was called Project Scarlet, I think. There, there, there is so many examples of how the avatar, the Connect, was awful. I think he's going to do it. I was going to show you a clip, but I think he's going to show it. And this resulted in an intuitive get up and play experience that made it easy for any demographic to play and enjoy. For 2009, it was pretty damn impressive. And in the eyes of- I, I do want to say, by the way, Microsoft thought that they could evolve the Kinect to use it for like actual like technology day to day, not just for funny movement video games. I remember seeing a video of Microsoft saying, uh, of, my, of someone performing an operation on someone using the Xbox Kinect. Imagine that. Imagine waking up from surgery and being like, sir, the surgery did not go through. We couldn't save the leg. Oh, but but what happened? Uh, the Xbox Kinect got unplugged halfway through. Many consumers, it made Sony and Nintendo's motion tech look kind of obsolete. But that night at E3, Microsoft would manage to continue the hype train. You see, after the unveiling of Project Natal, another speaker would take the stage to present a tech demo for Microsoft's new hardware. This guy, by the way, he reminds me of, uh, you know that guy in Red Dead Redemption who sells you snake oil? The guy with the top hat? He's in the first Red Dead, not the second. And he's just a complete scammer and a little wriggly worm. That's this guy. They, they based it off this guy. You know, I, I want to just say one thing to you, and that's the word interactive. That's Peter Molyneux, game designer for the Fable. But Mo Molyneux. It's not Molyneux, it's, it's, it's Molyneux. So, Peter Molyneux, uh, he made the Fable series, and that's the only good thing he's done. Fable 1, pretty decent. Fable 2, actually very good game. Fable 3, which was dog shit. Fable 3 was awful. That, that game, the problem is with Peter Molyneux, he oversells, he's a little bit of a snake oil salesman. So he'll oversell games almost like, but by buying a game, you're plugging into the matrix and like creating a new form of life. So Fable 3 was bad because it just had too many ideas that weren't executed well. In Fable 3, if you paused the game, you were teleported into a room where you could navigate your inventory, your spells, or like the game options. So if you were, if the game was a little bit loud, you know, you, you're playing at three in the morning, right? Out the TV. You didn't want mom to come in and like beat you with, with like a, a, a fucking, I don't know, like a shovel, right? As most British moms do. So you would have to press pause load into a new realm and then go and walk into another door go through another loading screen where you can mess with the cog to turn down the volume it was the most drawn out shit ever and former creative director at microsoft Sh shall we see the ratings hang on i'm using metacritic i don't care shut up 85 okay wasn't that good though 85 all right 89 all right and then fable 3 <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, well, it did not get an 80. It did not get an 80. Paid shill. Look at this. Uh, I remember Angry Joe years ago when I used to watch him. He did a video on like 100 things. He, there you go. He gave 32 reasons why the game sucked. That was 12 years ago. That was 12 years ago. Oh my God. Look at that intro. That's awful. You know, a lot of people ask me. Dude, he looks like he's 12 there. Joe. Why didn't you do a Fable 3 video? You did a Fable 2 video. Dude, I used to watch him and Nostalgia Critics so much, but then I then I turned 14. And what he's about Damn. to share with this audience at E3 will echo in eternity as one of the most intentionally deceitful unveilings in Microsoft's history. In his presentation, Peter claims to have developed an experience with Natal that he thinks will fulfill every gamer's lifelong dream, to build an innocent yet intimate relationship with a 10-year-old boy. Oh, wait, what? Oh, you guys just wanted Fable 3? Oh, shit. In the demo, Peter introduces us to Project Milo, a game about a boy that can supposedly see you, hear you, and actually get to know you through the screen. So they, they show in a tech demo for Project Milo, right? Where they have this, like, British woman, and she goes up to the TV, and she's like, Oh, hello, Milo, how are you doing? And then the kids are, Oh, I'm doing good, yeah, I just paid my tele license, yeah. And it, it, it is so obviously fake. And it, it, it's obvious that she's just reacting to a pre-rendered video. Like, it's not real. And But then you got Peter being like, did you notice how she looked at the screen and then he looked back? It's very immersive. It's like, how would how would it know where you're looking? You're looking at the TV. You're not looking at the camera on, on the Kinect, you idiot. Hi, Milo. How are you doing? Hi, Claire. You okay? By making use of the Natal hardware, Peter demonstrates how players can seemingly interact with Milo. Do, do you see, though, like, Looking at her. Now, keep in mind, that's a flat TV. That's a flat TV. So, if if the way Milo is looking off to the side would be the same way that he's looking... Even He wouldn't be looking at that woman. He'd be looking off to the side as well, not even giving her eye contact. Right? It's so fake. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how people... I remember seeing this when I was like 15. They get, this is fake as shit. I don't know how people are eating this up. Hello, through free-flowing conversations, giving the impression that the character on screen is some... It's a flat screen. It's not like it's 3D, you idiot. Like, he... I, I just don't understand how people fell for this. It's so annoying. Here we're seeing Claire being recognized. And the emotion in Claire's voice being recognized. And that emotion reflecting in Milo's face. Those are all being seen for the first time. At first glance, it looks quite impressive. Look at that, bro. Look at that. Look, she handed a piece of paper and then he takes it. You're telling me that shit is not just a pre-rendered video and she's an actor. Yet the way Peter describes it... Holy milkers, goddamn. You'd think his team <clears throat> had just stumbled on the means to creating sentient AI. And something tells me that's kind of what he wanted us to think. What's worse is that one look back at the comments section for this presentation proves that we bought right in. Of course, there were skeptics. Okay, d does he does he go over? All right, I I I want to see if he covers but, Milo anymore because I want to show you guys the, the full video of that. For the majority, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. People really thought Milo was a game changer, literally game than the actual hardware it was demoed for. Not to mention the potential this kind of AI had for countless genres in the industry. Why, when they're talking about complex AI, they're showing a scripted cutscene of General Shepard about to shoot you? Countless genres <laughs> in the industry. <laughs> Why would he show that? <coughs> the problem? It was all complete bullshit. Yeah, obviously it was fake. Like, the come demo on. was fake, the <gasps> actor was <gasps> acting, and <gasps> Peter was essentially <gasps> lying through his teeth. Oh, there's, there's no way. Was he? There's no way. No, I'm just kidding. He was. He totally was. And this was most certainly not the first time either. You see, Peter was notorious throughout the industry for overpromising, exaggerating. No, just lying. Just straight up lying. Okay, here's a funny thing, right? Hang on. Look at this. Steam worst ranked games. So, <clears throat> Hall of Shame shows the worst rated Steam games. By the way, by the way, by the way. So Jedi Survivor came out only two days ago, but because it runs so badly on PC, uh, it's 57th worst rated game on Steam. Now, if you go up in the top fucking 10 is Goddess. Eighth place. Goddess is a game made by Peter Molyneux. I remember playing this on my phone. This game is made by Peter Molyneux. Let's, let's, see, let's see how bad it is. Let's see how bad. Fuck it, oh. 
25%. Goddess was done by... Hang on. I'm, I'm very sure Peter Molyneux made this game. Yeah. Goddess was an effort by game, design, do, get that, the, game designer Peter Molyneux and his development studio 22 Cans. It was awful. So basically, if you guys don't know, Peter Molyneux, Black and White, was his first game. It was a weird game. I never played it, but it looks very weird. Artificial life and strategy. The player acts as a god whose goal is to defeat Nemesis, another god who wants to take over the world. So he plays like a good god trying to kill a bad god. And then he did a sequel called Goddess. I played Goddess and Goddess was just essentially uh, a game where you played as a god and you could terraform the land and stuff like create uh, waterways and pathways for uh, your villagers to like, you know, go to other villages and connect and trade. Sounds cool. Problem is it had microtransactions out the ass and then they just stopped supporting the game and it died. And it just ran away with all the money. And flat out lying about upcoming games. I mean, you could probably score the rest of this video with the flight of the bumblebee, and it would match the tone for the level of chaos this man has caused. But Milo? Milo was his magnum opus, a lie so deceitful that it crossed the point of outrage to just actually being kind of impressive. By utilizing his arsenal of clever word choice alongside demo footage that mainly consisted of smoke and mirrors, Peter managed to convince an entire generation of gamers that he had developed a technology 50 years ahead of its time. What would ensue was a roller coaster ride of PR shenanigans, miscommunication, backpedaling, and deception that would ultimately amount to nothing. But to understand how this happened in the first- Do you want to see the Project Marla video? I'll show you it. It's, it's awful. The fact that people ate that up on the day, it's just awful, bro. It's awful. The fact that people slurp this slop up. And this is Claire. She's going to introduce you to Milo. Keep in mind that there's no, you know, when you watch like an ad and it seems too good to be true. And then it will say something at the bottom, like, you know, uh, I hope you die young or something or like this ad is fake. There, there is no disclaimer this entire video. Nothing. Hi, Milo. How are you doing? Hi, Claire. You okay? Actually, I'm a bit nervous. You. Now, I know I already said this, but keep in mind, it's a flat screen, bro. It's a... Milo would not be looking at her. He'd be looking off there somewhere. That, that is the biggest way you could tell that this was Cap. I don't believe it. This is the first time that thousands of people are going to see this. Thousands of people. Here we're seeing Claire being recognized. And the emotion in Claire's voice being recognized. And that emotion reflects... See, that, that point where he's looking at the camera, at us, that is the only time where he would actually be looking at Claire. I was thinking today you should let me beat you at football again. That is if you finished your homework. You have finished your school project. You what okay? happened there is that Claire knew Milo so well, she knew when he was worried about yeah. something. The head was down. So... They, they were, they, they're literally not even saying the conversations are real, but they're saying that Milo can read emotions, like he's a telepath or something. He wasn't looking at the camera so much, and this is about you meeting a character, a person. Well, why don't I help you with yours? Then yours will be brilliant. Hmm. All right. All right, mate. I could just try to catch some fish, draw some pictures in my journal. Maybe I'll do okay this time. I think that's a good idea. Lift off! Oh. <laughs> The fact that Microsoft signed off on this, by the way, Microsoft actually said, okay, this is a great way to get people to buy a Kinect. An amazing way. Don't know till I try. Don't By showing a completely fake and scripted video acting like it's legit. Mr. Ruffle Waffles. Yeah, he's about to tell Claire like how to get the uh, Easter egg in that shot of the Totten. Put them on like this. Okay. What? Well, like that? Claire has been thrown a pair of goggles. Notice what she did. This wasn't active. You know, I'd like to think that Peter Molyneux said, and then a pair of goggles actually comes through the TV. And then someone at Microsoft is like, okay, Peter, Peter, we're stretching it a little bit already, mate. There's no way we're going to be able to make it out that a pair of goggles comes from the TV. And then it, it's actually legit. And then Peter be like, no, no, we have an actor behind the TV. Throw a pair of goggles over behind from the TV and it lands on Claire's lap. And they're like, no, no, no. It's like that we, we don't have the technology of teleportation yet peter you, you got to drop it it's like no you, you don't understand project natal is everything she felt the need to reach down you know you know i do kind of respect peter molyneux though because he's like a commentary channel on youtube like 10 years before they were actually a thing think about it the amount of cap he's spewing right now just to get the video over 10 minutes it's goggles now everybody every single person that has experienced this reaches down because they feel so connected to Milo's world. Cool. So what are we doing? 
Do I have to stand at the edge? I'd try and kick him, honestly. I would actually try and kick him or something, like punch him. Go on. Put your hands in. It's not too cold. Ah, I bet the fish think you're a monster. Cheeky. The, the only thing that kind of makes sense is the reflection because the the connect would actually be looking at you but also like claire wouldn't be rendered that well and she'd be moving at like 7 fps because the connect was awful there claire is in milo's world she's in that pond okay Every she's not hand movement she's not being recognized she's not in the pond she she's not in the pond she's in a she's in a sound recording room playing a video game this guy could actually milk anything man he could go to someone's funeral and then basically just say that the guy came back to life and like three people would actually believe him being able to touch fish being able to swish the water with her hand everyone who's experienced it the hairs are standing up on the back of their head yeah no i, I i've i've gone to a pool and just started grabbing fish in the middle of nowhere with some fucking random person yeah definitely now, what's about to happen is some real magic well you're good at drawing they're only fish but they're trickier than you think well here i'll have a go right i'm gonna do a body and a tail with a big fin and a smiley face there we go what do you think <laughs> people thought that was real people thought that was people thought that was real bro there was no prompt here or anything no nothing not even like you know if they tried to just make it seem a little bit legit and have something like i don't know uh hold hold it up to the connect to scan the picture nope what do you think she, she just holds it there for a split second he's already apparently recognized what it is through the sensor okay look at what just happened Orange. Claire drew a picture on a piece of paper. The piece of paper was held up to Milo. Natal recognized the piece of paper, scanned the piece of paper in. Milo looked at that piece of paper, recognized the shape, recognized the color, and able to get on with his project. I can't believe people believe that shit, man, for real. After founding Bullfrog Productions in 1987, Peter Molyneux would leap ahead. Bullfrog did make one good game, though. What, what kind of, like, Bullfrog made a game called Theme Park World. That's right. That that game was actually fun. It, it doesn't look it, and it probably did suck looking back on it, but I did play it when I was a literal toddler. And I thought, I thought that game was really fun. You basically made theme parks. You were like a theme park manager. It was really limited what you could do, though, and it was kind of shit. But I do remember having a lot of fun with that when I was a kid. Head first into game design with a focus on population sims. You know the ones, those top-down games with disembodied hands that control everything in the game world? These concepts were fascinating to Peter, and ultimately became the stage that allowed his knack for ideation to really shine. What if you were the owner of a theme park, the keeper of a dungeon, or the deity in charge of an entire island? Peter's games put the player in complete control, which ultimately helped redefine the scope for what games could actually be about, and usually with outstanding results. Throughout his time at Bullfrog, Peter would make leaps and bounds within the simulation space, known well for his early adoption of artificial intelligence and his invention of the god game genre. This would eventually lead their longtime publisher, Electronic Arts, to acquire the company in 1995. Unfortunately, EA's acquisition changed the way Bullfrog developed games, and Peter, who was unsatisfied with the changes, left the studio in 97 to pursue a new venture. This would ultimately lead Molyneux to found Lionhead Studios, with a handful of other ex-Bullfroggers. From there- Did Lionhead make anything apart from Fable? Lionhead Studio Games, Black and White, that's right, Black and White, Fable, Black and White 2, what's the movies? The movies? Isn't that that? Hang on a minute. Isn't isn't that the game that Germa played like ten years ago? I swear to God, this is like this is like bizarre. <laughs> Faster than waiting for a bus. <laughs> oh my so God. When you're feeling low. Remember, everyone's super. They just made slop. <laughs> There's plenty to eat when murder's on the menu. <laughs> Murder they just made slop. They didn't make anything good. Fable 2 pub games. That was literally a card game. Fable 2, Fable 3, Fable here. <coughs> <coughs> 
Fable the Journey. Oh, that's right. The game was on Connect and it sucked. And then uh, Fable 4. But that actually hasn't came out. Peter would spend a sizable chunk of money from the Bullfrog deal, investing over $6 million into Lionhead's first game. Dude. After three years of development, Black and White released in March of 2001 and was met with widespread critical acclaim. The game was praised heavily for its accomplishments in artificial intelligence, even appearing in the 2003 Guinness World Records for having the most intelligent being in a game. These accomplishments were what ultimately solidified Peter's belief in AI. Do you remember when people cared about Guinness World Records? I remember like every year I'd get one of the books for Christmas, despite the fact that, that it was for like two years previous. Inspiring him and his team to pursue further research on the topic. So that same year, Peter would officially launch a research project. The goal of their efforts was to develop a game that was smarter than anything ever seen on the market. A game that, years from now, would eventually become Milo. But until then, Peter would codename his venture Project Dimitri. You see, Peter loved code names and had a quirk of introducing and changing these names every time he spoke to journalists. Throughout his career, there was Project Dimitri, Project Ego, Project X, Project Milo. Project, project, X, 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 I mean, X. for a guy that couldn't keep his mouth shut in front of journalists, he sure did love secrets. And this problem had certainly become evident throughout his career. Up until this point, Peter had already begun developing a reputation for himself as somewhat of an overpromiser, notorious for making outlandish claims about features that would be included in upcoming games. Peter would later confess to even making up new features on the spot just to keep journalists interested. Most honest video game dev. I could name at least 10 features in games that I've made up to stop journalists going to sleep, and I really apologize to the team for that. And that problem would only grow worse no... when his company released Fable in 2004. To build excitement for the game, Peter would make all sorts of false promises for Fable, which ultimately ended up hurting the game's reception among fans. To give you a better idea of what I mean, here's just a few. 1. Peter said that Fable would be a completely open world with zero invisible boundaries. Okay, that's cap. If anyone's played Fable, it's basically just a bunch of small, semi-open areas. You can't walk two minutes without a loading screen in that game. That's pretty much every Fable game, honestly. But it was really bad in Fable 1. You weren't even exploring an open world, it was just a bunch of little like scenic corridors that's all that fable was scenic scenic corridors amazing views you see this ridge it's like can i go over there peter molyneux says no two peter said you could have children who take over as the playable character if you die in the game three i remember in fable 2 you could have a wife and you could have uh kids and then i did that in fable 2 and then i shot my wife on accident and then the kids uh, got taken away i got like a message saying they've been taken away to like uh like social services or something peter said you could plant a tree and watch it grow to okay if it, someone's gonna clip that it, include the fact that i said fable 2 beforehand include that don't take that out of context don't do it to fruition in real time and so on of course, none of these promises actually made it into the game, and probably caused most of his development team to slam their heads through drywall. The worst part was that Fable was a good game that just happened to fall flat because of heightened expectations. Some may write this behavior off as a passionate game designer getting overly excited about his game, but no matter how you twist it, Peter's big mouth was just plain unprofessional, and it was starting to affect his reputation. After Microsoft acquired Lionhead in 2005, the suits would attempt to remedy this issue by keeping a PR team around Peter at all times. <laughs> you know when you're like a toddler and you're unruly and they and they put you on that on that little leash? You know, you know, you know the little lead that like a full body harness they put on a toddler so they don't like run away when they're literally two years old. That is that is exactly what they did with people. <laughs> this was done to ensure he didn't get himself into any more trouble. Yeah, 
these, these, these nasty PR policemen that are all around me as we speak. I'm not allowed to talk about with the PR guards that are standing at the back shooting daggers with their eyes. Obviously, I can't answer questions like that because that may, I may, but I would get killed for if I announced it. <laughs> By now you're probably wondering, well, how does Milo fit into all this? And you'd be right to ask that. Well, sometime in 2007, after many years of experimenting, Peter had finally found some direction for Project Dimitri. You never heard of those things? It, it was it was like a it was like a, a harness you'd put on a toddler because they they literally would not stay near a parent. They, they, they'd run away. Someone said in chat that there was an actual word for it. I'm not repeating that word. I'm not repeating that word. For roughly six years, Lionhead's research into AI game systems had never actually resulted in a full game. Sure, many of their advancements made it into other games as features, but nothing quite managed to harness all of their efforts into one single title. And now, with pressure from Microsoft to actually return results, Peter needed to finally turn his passion project into profit. So, in 2007, Peter pitched a brand new idea to his associate Gary Carr, who was then an executive producer at- He's the British Todd Howard. Uh, I feel- I feel Peter is worse than Todd Howard. I feel that Peter is worse than Todd Howard. They- they do both cap a lot though. Microsoft. This new idea would build upon everything the team had worked on with Project Dimitri, but under a completely new name. You see, by 2007, Codename Dimitri was kind of a bad <coughs> word around Lionhead, and had become somewhat synonymous with failure. So, in order to improve morale regarding the project, Peter would codename their new venture, Milo, named after the game's protagonist. Development for Project Milo officially began in 2007, as a sort of simulation centered around the life of one individual took Peter's usual formula of population-based sims and flipped it on its head. Instead of a simulation involving multiple people, Project Milo would be about just one, a boy, and your actions in the game would determine who Milo grew up to be. It was basically a glorified parenting sim, except instead of taking the role of an actual parent, you were more of a friend or mentor or slave? I mean, the first prototype literally just had you doing Milo's chores, and from what I've learned, it didn't sound incredibly impressive. But according to Peter, Project Milo was utilizing an impressive display of AI technology, combining advancements made with Project Dimitri alongside Microsoft's own research. It was something- Imagine if Milo was just using like chat GPT and that's how we've got it today because it got leaked. Peter felt incredibly proud of, leading him to suggest in an interview that their achievements could eventually find them on the front page of Science Magazine. An important thing to note though was that until this point, Project Milo was strictly being developed for use with a controller and there was absolutely no knowledge of Project Natal up to this point. That was until 2000. <laughs> Who the fuck is this guy? It's like Agent Smith in a Hawaiian shirt. That was. Why is he wearing sunglasses indoors? Until 2008, when one of Peter's associates at Microsoft spilled the beans. Turns out, a group of Microsoft engineers had been working closely with an Israeli tech company to bring motion sensing hardware to the Xbox 360. This technology was first introduced to the world at the 2006 Game Developers Conference by a company called PrimeSense. At the convention, PrimeSense revealed a revolutionary new device capable of sensing and mapping human bodies in real time. At this point, the tech was still in its early stages, but it showed promise, which was illustrated through PrimeSense's earliest concept videos. And while many of these demonstrations looked impressive, the production quality was a bit more akin to a Tim and Eric sketch. So, what was the name of that movie you told me you wanted to see the other day? How about that one? I have to order pizza. Oh. Hi, how are you? Uh, hey, Greg, how you doing? I'm gonna have to call you back tomorrow night. Okay, bye. Bye. As cheesy as these demos were, the that's terrible. That just reminds me of the uh, it was it was like Aaron Paul talking to his Xbox. After the role of a lifetime, I've been busy. Xbox on, so <laughs> I look forward to my downtime. Xbox go to Titanfall. This is insane. Check this out. 
Xbox Snap TV. It does two <laughs> things at once. So I oh my god, bro! It was TikTok before TikTok. He literally is having dual dopamine. Look at that. Like he like what a game isn't enough for him, so he's like gonna watch TV at the same time. That that is on the same level as those TikToks you see, where it's like a family guy clip on the top half and the bottom half is subway surfers. Or the top half is like Reddit, am I the asshole? And the Reddit guy is talking about killing his wife, is he the asshole? And then the bottom half is like a Minecraft speedrun. While I watch my favorite shows at the same time. Whoa, Xbox, record that. I just wish I had more time to play. So that entire game, that entire ad, he played Titanfall. To be fair, Titanfall's a good game. Titanfall's a good game. Titanfall's a good game. He's got like TV playing up there. It's so small that it's not even worth, it's not even worth like watching that, honestly. And then uh, all he does is dodges a single attack in Titanfall. And then he goes, whoa, Xbox, record that, bitch. Yo, Mr. White. So it's a pretty average Xbox player, actually. Just does nothing productive and then records uh, absolutely mediocre gameplay. And also has a, has a chess set <laughs> in the background to imply some kind of intellectual uh, average Xbox player. Concept most certainly caught the attention of Microsoft and especially Peter Molyneux. This would lead Peter to completely rework Project Milo to incorporate this new hardware, which Microsoft had codenamed Project Natal. Peter now envisioned a game where players could actually speak to Milo through Natal, and Milo would ideally respond back. Microsoft ran with it, and for roughly the next year and a half, Lionhead would double the size of their team to help steer Project Milo in this new direction. This would set off the chain of events that would eventually lead to Peter's infamous demo at E309. Contrary to popular belief, Project Milo was not entirely a hoax. As misleading as it was, the video Peter showed at E3 was technically not a complete fabrication, because Lionhead was really working on a real game. And after the incorporation of Project Natal, Milo was actually capable of a handful of impressive feats. He could understand over 500 unique words, recognize <coughs> the color of your clothing, and even interpret the tone of your voice. This was all real technology that the Lionhead team was working on, and it was all really being done with Project Natal. The problem? It was still pretty janky. Developers who worked on the project admitted that it was a challenge to demonstrate the game live, and players could very easily break the illusion of Milo's sentience if they wished to do so. What made this situation more dire was the fact that later that year, Project Milo was set to be unveiled at E3 alongside Natal. So how would they do it? Well, they'd stage it, of course. I mean, was it really that big of a lie as long as the game was actually being developed? Well, yes, especially when you consider the way the demo was fabricated. Just a few weeks before E3, Lionhead would hire an actress to help stage their presentation and worked with a film crew to produce it. And look, staging certain aspects of a technology for the purposes of ensuring a smooth presentation is maybe arguably one thing. But the creative liberty- There have been so many examples of, like, segments in E3 that went wrong. I'm sure you've all seen this. I've shown this on stream a lot of times. Do you want to know what the bottom of an avatar's shoe looks like this is a perfect example i'm very sure he's going to show this in the video but this is awful this is what happens when you don't show a pre-rendered video you ever wonder what the bottom of an avatar shoe looks like well bam there it is <laughs> <coughs> all he did was lift his leg up One how i don't understand how the arms got so messed up like what happened yes. that is awful also i like how zeus here is watching a movie on his xbox that's actually like a that's what most people do on the Xbox now. They just watch films because there's nothing to play. ...properties that were taken with Milo's demo made implications that grossly exaggerated the capabilities of the actual product. And this was the factor that ultimately landed Peter in such hot water. Now, let's jump back to E3 2009, where Microsoft has just finished unveiling Project Natal for the first time. The tech is impressive, and kind of steals the show from Sony, who unveiled a wand-based version of their own motion tech the same night. That racket is actually in the virtual world. It's in Anton's hand. <laughs> Next to take the stage is Peter, who I can only assume is engaged in some sort of weird pre-show ritual behind the curtains, very a la Joker. 
I mean, you gotta be a little crazy to pull a stunt like this in front of the entire gaming industry. So, Peter makes his presentation and introduces Milo to the world. On first watch, the video actually looks pretty convincing. The interactions presented in the video make the implication that players can have complex, free-flowing conversations with Milo, and can come to form deep personal relationships with him. Listen. Of course, as you can probably tell, this entire interaction is scripted. There's even moments in the video where Milo appears to remember seemingly impressive details about the actress's personal life. Science fiction is not- I know where you live! I know your home address. Even written about. Don't forget your mom's birthday. Did you catch that? Apparently Milo just on a whim remembered Claire's mom's birthday, which once again tries to reinforce the gaze appears to follow you wherever you move. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, he is bringing up the gaze thing. I was going to say I, I really hoped he was going to bring that up because it's just gaze appears to follow you wherever you move around the room. It's why paintings like the Mona Lisa seem to always be watching you, even if you change where you're standing. So why isn't Milo doing that? Yes, he's looking at Claire, but we're not looking from Claire's perspective. This is, of course, once again, because the entire video was fabricated towards the camera, ultimately ruining the immersion they wanted to create between Milo and Claire. So they faked it. And in a blatant rejection for the laws of perspective, the team re-rigged Milo to look slightly to the side to look at Claire. Yeah. As you can probably tell so far, it's I don't we don't need to go into this, but it's just so obviously fake. I, I'm amazed that no one actually caught onto that. Uh, let's see the journalist reactions. Later that night, after the E3 press conference, a select group of journalists were picked to actually meet Milo and demo the project for themselves. Okay, I can guarantee every journalist that was told to meet Milo, they were they worked for Xbox. This was like Xbox's own magazine. And this is where things started to take a bit of a turn. While the demo was impressive, many playtesters would quickly come to see through the smoke and mirror tricks used to give Milo the illusion of sentience. For example, Milo could understand words, but only certain ones, and those words had to be given within the correct context to be understood in the first place. If you asked Milo something yourself and he didn't understand, his code would prompt him to either politely nod or shake his head which made many attempts at communication just kind of fall flat. So it's basically ChatGPT. It literally is ChatGPT. Or, it, or, or like it's the equivalent of ChatGPT when you say something and be like, I'm, I'm not programmed to say that. I'm not programmed to comment about that. If you tried to tell him a joke, sometimes Milo could read the tone of your voice and interpret it as such, omitting a laugh. Of course, Milo didn't actually get the joke and wouldn't comment on it in any way but it was part of the illusion. Dude, imagine if you just say like, uh, you ask Milo, it's like, are you, uh, do you, do you, do you say like slurs on six siege in chat? And then like, he doesn't understand the question. So he just nods. That's really dangerous. You could get him to agree to really fuck stuff. Journalists remarked on how, if you played Milo by the rules, you could actually have half decent conversations with him. But any, and I mean any attempt to go off script would immediately poke holes in the illusion. But the journalists' impressions didn't really do much to quell the excitement for the game. Just like any hype train, once it gets going, it's kind of hard to stop. So, E3 2009 ends, and Microsoft is swarmed with enthusiastic journalists <coughs> chomping at the bit for details about Milo and Project Natal. And the excitement is palpable. Milo himself looks like he came from a heavy- yeah, no, he legit looks like one of the kids from Heavy Rain. I was thinking that. So tell me more about your role with Project Natal. So I'm essentially the technical director for the technologies that you saw. So from our perspective, the inspiration really was, could we actually incorporate the human into the gameplay so that we could- Oh, she's going through a lot. And he sounds so terrified. Like he's got a gun being pointed at him by Peter Molyneux. I like how they always did this, by the way, with like game journalist stuff. They'd always hire like conventionally attractive women that just did not care about video games at all. They did not care. Into the gameplay so that we could create a system them whereby of course peter does a few interviews as well and you can rest assured his pr team is standing just outside the frame what is the objective well i could <coughs> you know what i would love to tell you that what's the point of uh project it's how work i could go through the story there's you know an amazing story but i have a good rule that i will not talk about things unless i can show them but it is definitely a game
That's that's a brave statement. That's a very brave statement there. My that's like when they announce the PlayStation 6, they'll say it comes with Netflix. That's a brave statement. Milo, Peter ensures that development is in full swing. And while a release date cannot be given, the game is most certainly expected to be brought to market. Yet strangely enough, that would be the last time we'd hear of Milo for a very long time. The following year, E3 2010 would come and go without so much as a word from Milo, and fans definitely had some questions. But this time, they got different answers. These, uh, you know, the Milo project was something that uh, Lionhead Studios and their labs had developed, and obviously that's a tech demo and technology that continues <laughs> to, to exist, but right now it's, uh, it's not existing. <laughs> <coughs> 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 Tech demo. He got <laughs> uh, Lionhead Studios and their labs had developed, and obviously that's a tech mm. demo. In <laughs> he killed it. <laughs> I'm gonna pass out. I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> he called it a tech demo. He called it a tech demo, man. Like imagine, like bro, it's a pre-recorded interview. How did this? How did this get out? This is a live stream. It's Microsoft themselves as well. Technology that continues to, <laughs> to exist, but right now it's uh, it's not a game that we're planning to bring to market. That was Aaron Greenberg, oh. a PR executive for Microsoft, who made that statement sometime in 2010. Shortly after that, Peter oh. would go on record to quite condescendingly denounce Aaron's statements. Bro, that was like that was like Walter White in season one when he's running down the stairs. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was that was actually I spelt coughing wrong. <coughs> <coughs> okay. It was a weird era in the game's development where, depending on who you asked at Microsoft, your answer on Project Milo was completely different. Behind the scenes, Peter was in a sort of power struggle with the higher ups at Microsoft. Okay, I know I spelled it wrong. I know I sp Hello? After roughly three years in development, Project Milo, now called Milo and Kate, was failing to meet the expectations Microsoft- Holy, that dog looks awful. Oh my god, look at the fur physics of that. Oh my Microsoft god. Microsoft had in place for the title. And it definitely didn't help that Peter had wildly raised those expectations back in 2009. Worse still, Microsoft had significantly pulled back on Project Natal's hardware capabilities, attempting to cut costs by downgrading the device's processor, which subsequently narrowed the scope for Project Milo. Fast forward to mid-2010, and fans are wondering when and if they'll ever get an update on Milo's development. And finally, after over a year of anticipation, Peter would eventually- Oh, that fit there. That is a peak 2010 fit there. The boy band haircut and the big beanie. Oh my. He actually looks like an extra in Heavy Rain right there. Finally, after over a year of the amount of The amount of played shirts as well. You could really Finally, tell this is just this is just peak 2010. I love it. I, I hate the fact that this image is almost nostalgic. After over a year of anticipation, Peter would eventually break his silence on the project. This update would come in the form of a TED Talk, which was already a really, really bad sign. If Microsoft actually had realistic plans to release Milo, they would have announced it at E3 2010 earlier that year. But clearly the game's release had reached a level of uncertainty that could no longer justify a feature at the event. They, they really were showing Justin Bieber on Xbox. That, that was the selling point of the Xbox, is that you could play Justin Bieber. ...or justify a feature at the event. So instead, Peter opts to quietly demo the game at TED Global, in what could be seen as one of the most egregious attempts at backpedaling I have ever seen. He did it at TED I Talks. Mean, what Peter demonstrates he gave a to the TED crowd Talk, at TED man. Global is almost a completely different game from what he showed fans the year before. And the way he introduces it just makes it all the worse. So, a year ago, I showed this off at a computer show called E3. Really, Peter? A computer show? This comment was either a sign that Peter was getting old, or rather a feeble attempt to avoid mentioning the word video game to what I can only assume is a slightly older audience. It, it, it definitely would have been to avoid that. This was a piece of technology. It was someone called Claire interacting with this boy. And there was a huge row online about, hey, this can't be real. And so I waited till now to have 
an actual demo of the real tech. Wow, Peter the Brain, Molyneux has done it again. Who knew this was his plan the whole time? No way this was some sort of half-baked attempt to backtrack on false promises made for a game that was built on misleading footage and blatant lies. It was just a primer to get us excited for the actual game. Okay, but really though, have you ever wit- Also, what the fuck was my YouTube homepage there? What the fuck was my YouTube homepage? Didn't I just see Howard as- What is this? What is this? <laughs> this is real? The Sainsbury's. Okay. All right. Why is it? Why, why is it so dramatic? It's like a Call of Duty intro card for a mission. Buy the soap. Is this a horror game? There's nothing there. That that looks like an actual UK supermarket. It's just nothing. There's nothing on the shelves. Okay. Okay. I don't think. Okay. I, I like how the beer pour came down and not a single droplet went into the glass. Keep in mind, in hang on, I'm I'm seeing if I can find. Keep in mind, in the image, he's holding a pint, but then he still has an additional pint, <laughs> even though <laughs> literally textured into the body. <laughs> oh, he's a British lad, a, a true British lad. There, he's evolving. Oh, what's he doing? Maybe it was a Stella. Defeat Barry 63. Did you get trapped in a pine glass? Is it is he trapped in a pine glass? Ah. It, I like how they're just playing the Winston Churchill speech just over and over the bit where he just doesn't even make any sense. Why is it like an octopus? Amazing. That actually happens if you go to Britain, by the way. Uh, there, there, there's another one. There's another one. This one, this is, oh, this is a beautiful video. Yes. Look, I, I am more white than you. You look gypsy. I am blonde hair. Blonde hair I have. You gypsy. That means that someone fucked your mother that is your kid, but your father is not. Oh, your mother is a boy <laughs> that you got fucked from someone. <laughs> It's white, Greek, brown, gypsy. Put you're not white. European. You are white. White. You you gypsy, brown. <laughs> you are wings fed. You are wings fed. This is Wait. the strong fed. This is the Greek god. Okay, Greek god. You are a fucking fuck Greek god. god. If you if you have if you have Greek god, you would have win, but you lose. <laughs> lose where? Lose where? You lose. Why is why is Hagia Sophia this not? <laughs> They're both from the Balkans, anyway. It's like. <laughs> Pointless this argument. More blatant admission of guilt. I mean, he literally comes out and says this is the actual demo of the real tech. At this point, he's not even trying to hide that the game was a lie. And then he has the audacity to try and put a bow on the whole thing by pinpointing his team's one sole goal. Just to get to the scam, one scam, simple idea. Scam. To create money, a money, living money, being money, a money. Oh yeah, Peter. That one simple idea? You mean the idea that modern technology hasn't even come close to cracking? The idea that could one day lead to technological singularity, subsequently blurring the definition of what it actually means to be human? And you found that on the Xbox 360? Listen, I've really tried to cut Peter some slack in this video, but the way he talks about creating Milo like he's some sort of 21st century Geppetto is just really, really annoying. Yet he still tries to redeem himself with what appears to be some newfound attempt at transparency. Now, I'll be honest with you and say that <coughs> most of it is just a trick. Oh. Oh. 
Wow. Amazing. There's a reason I'm spending so Powerful. much time on this intro. It, it's, I mean, with every... It's almost like if he didn't say it was all fake, there was a lawsuit dangling over him. So why don't we go over and have a look at the demo now. This is Dimitri. This is Dimitri? Like, the Project Dimitri? Turns out this part isn't a lie. Apparently, the original project was named after his godson the whole time, who actually worked at Lionhead on the Fable games. Who knew? Now comes the actual- I hate to admit it, but Dimitri sat there. He looks like he, he looks like he's got a laser pointer sniper just aimed at him and ready to take shot. Cool demo. The honest demo. And there's one key difference right off the bat. It appears as though this time we have a real person playing the game live. Finally, the curtains have been drawn back and we can see some real gameplay for the first time. Let's check it out. So, he's discovering the garden. You're helping him discover the garden by just pointing out these snails. So, the demo finally begins and what we appear- Oh my god, he points at stuff. Oh my god. Okay, I know I've spent the past like half an hour like shitting on Peter Molyneux, but the fact that Project Milo, it has no facial recognition, no voice recognition. You can't hold a piece of paper up to it and then it instantly recognizes what it is. You can't do that, but you can point at snails. Oh my god. He's done it, boys. Peter's done it. I'm, I'm so proud of him. Here to get is some sort I'm of, so proud of him. rails snail spotting simulator. It's a bizarre way to start, especially considering the bold claims Peter made about- It is, it, okay. So all this is, is a pre-rendered video, right? Where Milo will reveal targets. What the fuck is that? You promised my son free- C-R-A-F-T, Creecraft. You promised my son that you are going to give him free Robux. <laughs> and because of your free Robux promise- Who is this guy? Up Till two o'clock night, and he watched all your live streaming <laughs> for four hours. For one hour, <laughs> for one hour he was there stuck, and no! he expected you to give free robux. No, what no free robux. Doing? No free robux. I'm so disappointed. There's no way. The way he points to the camera, this man is in danger. <laughs> uh, what was I going to show? Anyway, back on track. So this is a pre-rendered video, right? And all you're doing is shooting targets, targets, quotation marks. This is no better than Rayman raving rabbits. The, 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 the shooting bits where you had the plunger. This is no better than that. This, it's no better than this. Way to start. Cause look, Especially you're spotting, you're, go, fuck off. You're spotting oh, the demo little snails on, on a pre-recorded video. You are doing the same thing here. The, the exact same thing. You, you, it's an on-rail shooter segment. It's a House of the Dead, but even worse. Wow. Really ...considering the bold claims Peter made about Milo in the intro. As the camera rolls along, Milo finds another snail on the ground, at which point Milo encounters his first test of morality. Turns out Milo has a thirst for blood and sadism, and toys with the idea of squishing the snail underneath his shoe. At Why? this point, Dimitri is prompted to use voice commands to either encourage Milo's behavior or stop him. Do you want Milo to squash it? Yes. When you see the microphone, say yes. Squash. Go on, Milo, squash it. No, oh, that's the right thing to do. Nice one, nice one, Dimitri. No, that's the right thing to do. Milo, Milo has changed. That's the equivalent of like when it when you bomb Megaton in Fallout 3 and it goes, you've got negative karma. Like, really? Oh my god. He... My le bomb kill people. By the way, if anyone knows what I'm on about in Fallout 3, hang on. You know this bit in Fallout 3 where you nuke Megaton? Megaton? The funny thing is about it, right? Everyone thinks it's the most evil quest in the... Can I see it? There we go. People think that this is the most evil quest in the entire game, right? You literally kill 20 people, bro. Megaton had no one living there, man. Oh my god. My, my le bomb. My le bomb le kill 25 people? You get, you get, oh, I want to keep, I want to, I looked at the wiki. You get 1,000 negative karma for nuking Megaton. If you're on the very good karma maxed out, it will instantly put you to very evil. For killing, you could gun down 25 innocent people in the wasteland and still not have as much negative karma as nuking Megaton. Despite the fact that like four people actually live there. It's insane. Come as a surprise is how the voice recognition system has changed. You'll notice that in this new demo, there are explicit prompts for when you can actually speak to Milo. 
Of course, this wildly contradicts Peter's first demo of the game, in which it's heavily implied that speed Press this button kills 21 people. is free-flowing and spontaneous. At this point, the presentation continues for another six or seven minutes, where Peter demos a handful of other incredibly boring minigames. But what makes it funny is how these demonstrations are always accompanied by long-winded boasts of how the game is so much more sophisticated than it actually looks. His face, by the way, is fully AI-driven. We have complete control over his blush responses, the diameter of his nostrils. His mind is based in the cloud. If you're leaning forward, he would slightly change the neuro-linguistic nature of his face. Neuro-linguistic nature. Are you actually using... Oh my God, he reminds me of me, like trying to milk a video out to eight minutes and I ran out of script. Oh my God. Mind is based in... The Dude, it's like me when I was doing creative English. And I was like trying to like milk out a story to get like an A or something. Cloud. If you're leaning forward, he would slightly change the neurolinguistic nature of... Okay, okay, let's see if it's a word. If it's a word, I apologize, I kneel. Neurolinguistics is the study of how language is represented to the brain. Okay, it is an actual word. I kneel. I kneel. I thought he was genuinely just like putting two words together like a jigsaw piece. But it still has no application to what he was just saying about Milo. Because it is literally just an AI that looks at you through a camera and it knows what shirt you're wearing and that's it. You're actually sculpting... Someone said electrolytes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a database of words which we recognize, we pick those words out, we also, we also reference that which is ton, uh, the Tonation database. In all honesty, I would imagine the audience was bored to death by this presentation. After three years in development, the game just looks so incredibly underwhelming. And Why would anyone want to play a game about hanging out with a ten-year-old? <laughs> <coughs> that is also that is also a very good point. This is also made evident by the presentation's view count, which is dwarfed in comparison to the millions of views garnered by the first demo. Yep. So it may come as no surprise to learn that shortly after this presentation was made, Microsoft would permanently shut down development for Milo and Kate. No! This was of course due to no! a multitude of different factors and Milo and Kate bros. We got too cocky. Vape is bad. Bro, I am like the only guy in the UK that doesn't vape. I'm annoyed, man. I'm legit annoyed. Like, I should not be coughing this much, man. I do not vape. As the project evolved, Microsoft would opt to target demographics engaged in party settings, which kind of put Milo's mellow single player gameplay into an awkward category. It's also fair to speculate that Microsoft closed development due to false expectations surrounding the game, which were set so high by Peter's outlandish claims. Whatever the reasons, the news came as a devastating blow to the Lionhead team, who were all incredibly excited about what they had built up to that point. Regardless of Peter's lies, Project Milo really utilized state-of-the-art technology that resulted in many impressive features. There was formidable voice, image, and even emotional recognition that genuinely would have held weight as impressive features for its time. So it came as even more of a disappointment when the team was forced to recycle all of their progress into a watered-down spin-off for the Fable series. The way Microsoft saw it, they weren't going to let three years of technological development fall through the cracks without making a little cash. Research ended up being reworked into a new Kinect game set in the Fable universe. Suddenly, Milo's emotional recognition was being repurposed so players could develop bonds with in-game horses, and Milo's hand tracking became the foundation for casting spells. It right, okay. Fable, the journey. Let's see how it did, boys. Let's see how it did. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. That's not great. Fascinating, humorous. I uh, don't think so, buddy. After Fable's failure on Connect in 2012, Peter would leave Lionhead permanently to no! pursue yet another independent venture. Lionhead bros, we got too cocky. Peter felt as though Microsoft's hold on Lionhead was becoming too much of a creative Pyro. Player. Peter would then go on to found his third new company in the gaming industry 22 cans uh oh unsurprisingly uh oh here's where the scam here's where the scams get big though peter's new venture would fall prey to much of the same behavior that he was known for previously with a sequence of scandals and false promises that would continue as a result of his presence in the media 
In 2012, Peter was asked about his thoughts on Microsoft's decision to cancel Milo, and in a brazen attempt to deflect all blame, claimed that he felt the industry just wasn't ready for it. Somehow, you guys aren't ready for Milo. You don't understand. It, it's not that we're not ready. You're not ready for Milo. Peter had convinced himself that Project Milo was just too ahead of its time to be brought to market. And I guess if you consider all the lies he made about the game, then yeah, he was right. But now, with breakthroughs in artificial intelligence occurring every other day, we may not have to wait too long before Thank we you, see Sickly Goat, for the 10 idea. months. Appreciate it, man. Let's just hope that, unlike Peter, they've got the proof to back it up. Thanks for watching. <coughs> All right, boys. <laughs>